In class, we develop the formulas for simple interest, for compound, periodic compound interest, and for continuous compound interest. Four variables are present in each of these three formulas. A, which represents the final amount, or that's sometimes called the future value. P is the principal. It's sometimes called the present value. It's the amount that's deposited in the bank and then earns interest to become the final amount A. R is the annual interest rate. If the interest is simple interest, we'll use the simple interest formula. If the interest is compounded periodically, we'll use the compound interest formula. And finally, if the interest is compounded continuously, if it's a continuous compound interest, then we'll use the continuous compound interest formula. The fourth variable that exists in all three of these formulas is time, and that's measured in years. The compound interest formula has the additional variable of n which tells the number of compounding periods in a year. So if we're compounding quarterly, n will be 4. Compounding semi-annually, n will be 2. If we're compounding annually, then n will be 1. If we're compounding daily, n would be 365. But that will always be given in the problem. So let's talk about what you need to learn in this module. In general, we'll be looking at situations where money is being deposited and becoming a, a future value. So we will be given three of the, of the four variables. And our job will be to find algebraically the missing variable. What that means in any given problem, we'll need to do the following. First of all, we'll identify what type of interest the account is bearing, whether it's a simple compound or continuous compound uh, problem. That will uh, tell us which one of the three formulas we're going to be interested in using. Then we'll identify what the missing variable is. We'll identify the value of each of the given variables. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the given values to the correct uh, interest formula and then algebraically solve for the missing variable. So just count the number of problems that we're going to need to uh, be able to handle. There's 12 different types because there are four different variables in each situation and three different uh, formulas. So an ex we'll look at an example of each one of those. Here's our first problem. Deposit $300 in an account paying 3% simple annual interest. How much is in the account after five years? So the first thing to notice here is that this is a simple annual interest problem, so we'll use the simple interest formula. So now let's look back at the story and see which of these variables are known. We the question is how much is the account how much is in the account after five years? So we're looking for the future value or that final A amount. That's the amount that we're looking for. We're going to need to find P, R, and T. That is, we're going to have to find in the problem. P, R, and T is going to have to be given to us so that we can find what the A is. $300 is deposited in the account, so that's the present value or the principal. We're given that the money is put into an account paying 3% simple annual interest so the 3% is R, and the simple annual interest also told us that this was the formula that we were going to use. So R is 3%, which is <clears throat> as a decimal is 0 0.03. And of course T is 5 because this is going to be in the account for 5 years. There's really not any algebra to do here. This is just a calculator problem at this point. Find out what A is by doing that calculation. So at the end of five years, we'll have $345. The second problem, again, we're going to deposit $300 into an account, paying simple interest again. But after five years, we know the, uh, the uh, future value. 
350 and what we need to do is find the interest rate. Again we use the simple interest formula. The missing variable is often identified by what the question is. What is the interest rate? So we don't know what that is already. But notice in here that uh, we're depositing 300 so that's the present value and in the future in five years from now we're going to have 350 so that's the final amount and of course T is 5. So there we are with the values substituted in and what we do need to do is solve for R. We're just going to subtract 300 from both sides, divide both sides by uh, the right amount. Of course an obvious first step is to multiply this 300 and the 5 giving us this equation. Subtract 300 from both sides Divide both sides by uh, 1,500, and then this is just a calculator problem to find out what R is. As a decimal, the answer is 0 0.0333 repeating. We need to change that to a percent. So the interest rate is 3 and a third percent. The next problem is again a simple interest problem. We're 3 percent simple annual interest, so we'll use the same simple interest formula. But now we're going to ask how much must be deposited. That is, what is the present value of some money that we are going to put on deposit at simple interest uh, to have $400 at the end of six years. So because the problem is a simple interest problem, we use the simple interest formula. We're told what the future value needs to be. That's $400. We know that the interest rate is 3% or 0 0.03 as a decimal and we are looking at uh, six years from now. We need to know what the present value uh, is. Do the obvious multiplication. Combine like terms now. And now it's a matter of dividing both sides by 1.18p. So the calculator produces the result, 338.9831. So the, the present value needs to be about $338. And 90, we better make it 99 cents because if we really made it 98, we'd get a little bit less than what we needed. So in this kind of a situation, it would be best to round up. So if we're advising somebody, this is the amount they would need to deposit to get that amount.